Welcome back. All right. <clears throat> Trade time again. Uh, a couple of seemingly minor deals, but we'll see. I'm wearing Vegas because, uh, hey, fascinating. So Jacob Voracek has been traded to the Arizona Coyotes. There's speculation he may not play again. So he goes to Arizona along with the 2023 sixth round pick. Columbus gets back John Gillies. Gillies is a goaltender who can play in the NHL. Uh, has shown he can play, be a decent third. But he may very well end up getting called up by Columbus because of another move that was made by Columbus here. Uh, so, yeah, uh, with that move, the Arizona Coyotes now have $28.2 million on injured reserve. And then they have another $3.5 million, I think, which is uh, made up of dead cap money. So that's a lot of money that's just not being spent on players on the ice. So the Coyotes will continue that because, again, the expectation is Voracek probably doesn't play next year either. His career is probably done. So um, you could put together quite the Legends team with players who've had their rights owned by the Coyotes but who never played for the Coyotes. Uh, and now Voracek's been added to the list along with guys like Datsuk and Hosa. You can make a pretty good team out of the guys who've gone to Arizona to not play for Arizona. Uh, Sammy Blay signs a one-year extension with the Blues worth a million dollars. I've been praising Blay since he's returned to St. Louis. His play much better in St. Louis than it was with the New York Rangers. It just never worked there. Uh, injury problems and everything as well for Blay. And I think, I think they've done well. Uh, and getting Blay back to his game in St. Louis, or it just fits, just works for him. So uh, good to see him sign an extension. Uh, Appleton's been placed on the injured reserve by the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, Janssen Fialbi's been recalled. It feels like he's recalled or sent down every other day. It's a good thing that their AHL affiliate is the Manitoba Moose. Uh, so yeah, Janssen Fialbi called up. Dubois unlikely to play tomorrow. Uh, they're hoping that he returns on Saturday. So it's an injury that's kept him out for a little bit. It's going to keep him out at least through tomorrow is, is likely. And then that Saturday return would be big. The Jets, of course, are in the mix for a playoff spot, but they've, they've played their way down now to the number two wildcard spot. Uh, Logan Stanley, also a report has come out that Logan Stanley wants out. Logan Stanley, 24 years of age, big, strong defenseman, and it hasn't worked out very well in Winnipeg for him. Now, it was a few years ago, I, was, I really thought Stanley had a lot of upside. That just hasn't turned out. So I'm not sure how much of a market there is for Logan Stanley, but if he wants out, I'm sure the Jets will make phone calls. I would think probably a late draft pick, probably not a lot they're going to get back, maybe another project from another team. Uh, Stanley's still young enough at 24 years of age. It could work out for him. Just doesn't look like it's going to work out in Winnipeg. I'm kind of surprised Hainola hasn't asked for any kind of a trade out of Winnipeg that we've heard of yet. Uh, it feels like hanola has been, been banging his head against that glass ceiling trying to make the team, and it just just hasn't worked for him. Whether that's his play that's determined that or whatever it is, I'm, I'm kind of surprised he's still Jets property at this point. Uh, so the Ottawa Senators off the tremendous acquisition of Jacob Chikrin and the fact that Dorian didn't have to give up a prospect or anybody off the roster to make it happen, this is being seen as a huge win for the Ottawa Senators. And of course for the Coyotes, well, they just want to stockpile draft picks and prospects. Uh, the draft picks they get from Ottawa... Probably not being exactly what they wanted, but it did free up some cap space to bring in Voracek. So they still get extra draft picks anyways. But the Ottawa Senators, uh, it, when asked, Pierre Dorian saying they're not trading Sogard, Greg, or Clevin. Now, in the case of Sogard and Greg, good, because Sogard looks like he's going to be a pretty darn good NHL goaltender. He's 22 years of age. Ridley Greg has been very good for them. He's a good energy bottom six guy right now who has some top six upside. And Clevin hasn't made his debut for the Sens yet, but his upside is there. He's seen as a pretty solid, uh, likely top six slash top four defenseman soon enough. So yeah, Ottawa's not not budging on. They don't want to lose any of their, their best assets uh, in order to go for it at the deadline. And I kind of like that. So uh, Pierre Dorian continuing to show how smart a GM he is. He's been doing this for the last two years. And uh, I think that's continued. So even if... They aren't where he predicted they would be before the start of the season. Uh, he's done a good job of building them up and uh, showing that Ottawa is going to be a pretty darn good team pretty soon. Uh, Jonathan Quick is now a member of the Vegas Golden Knights. Yep. Uh, the only thing that hasn't come out yet, and the reason I'm doing this video now, because as soon as this video goes live, it'll get announced, 
Don't know what's going the other way. I wouldn't think it's a lot. Uh, in picking up Jonathan Quick, this makes things interesting. And if I had a dime for every fan that I've seen say, now I want to see Vegas and LA in the first round, right there with you. Um, I think that would be fascinating if Vegas won the division and played LA in the second round, or if Seattle or Edmonton wins the division and Vegas plays LA as the 2-3 matchup in the first round. Either way, uh, Vegas picking up Jonathan Quick is a very interesting move. Because uh, there's comparisons to how L.A. Uh, did this with Jonathan Quick and how Vegas did things with um, Marc-Andre Fleury. The difference being Marc-Andre Fleury was the Vezina winner before Vegas did that, and Jonathan Quick is statistically having a really rough season. So it's a little bit different, but still, uh, Quick and Fleury seen as, as legends by the fan bases in general. And those fan base is not happy about the way things came to an end. I also want to congratulate Columbus for doing the right thing. Uh, this is something that, that could have been dragged out. This is something that could have could have been whatever. But as soon as it came out that Quick had no interest in going to Columbus, Columbus makes sure they get him on the phone and they make sure they do the right thing and move him. And so we'll see what kind of an asset they get back uh, from the from the uh, Vegas Golden Knights in this one. But Jonathan Quick's been traded twice now. I look forward to the uh, video for Columbus, uh, for Jonathan Quick, the thank you for being a member of the team. I look forward to that. Um, I want to see some, some photoshopped uh, images of Quick in Columbus. One thing is I was really looking forward to seeing what Quick's mask would look like in Columbus because uh, Quick always has fantastic masks. Uh, his mask in Vegas is going to be killer. Certain of it because in LA, his masks are always fantastic. It's one of those masks that when you go to a game, doesn't matter where you're sitting in the arena, you can tell his mask is sparkly and it's fun. And Yeah, anyways, uh, Jonathan Quick to Vegas. You guys can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below on that. Derek Pouliot signed a contract with the San Jose Sharks, so they've placed him on waivers. Uh, Pouliot, depth defenseman. It's an odd move from San Jose, though, isn't it? So he's going to be playing with the Barracuda, it looks like, which I think he's already been playing for the Barracuda. But he signs signs a deal with San Jose. So it's possible he clears waivers, which would be 11 o'clock tomorrow, and then ends up getting traded. So maybe there's a team that's willing to, to give a late draft pick for him, and maybe this is San Jose's way of making it happen. Sign him. Uh, wave him. Once he's cleared waivers, you can then trade him. It's the only thing I can think of because it's not like San Jose's in the hunt for a playoff spot. Speaking of San Jose, former Shark uh, Mikey Asimont uh, will be making his debut for Tampa Bay. He's going to wear number 23. I think Tampa fans are going to like Asimont a lot. And I think with Asimont, with Janot, I think there's a certain type of bottom six guy Tampa Bay's picking up. These guys are not going to be easy to play in the first round, which won't surprise anybody. It's not like they've they've been to the Stanley Cup final three years in a row or anything. But yeah, uh, for Tampa Bay picking up Asimont uh, and getting him for Nemestikov, I think it's a good move. Nemestikov had a good start to the season with Tampa, but it really faded lately. So Asimont should be interesting. Uh, he can check. There's a little bit of offense there too. He's an energy guy. Standard Tampa Bay pickup at the deadline, right? All right. There you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.